Hello, this is Ricardo from the Interside TME team. In this video, we're going to explore how to execute PowerShell scripts using Interside orchestration. If you use Interside.com, you will need to have an Interside Assist claimed and in connected state in order to reach your PowerShell target. As of today, we only support Windows servers. If you're using the private virtual appliance or the connected virtual appliance, the appliance itself will be already able to reach your PowerShell target. To use the Invoke PowerShell script task, PowerShell remoting needs to be enabled on your target. Please visit interside.com slash help for more details. So first of all, we need to claim our targets. So we go under the uh, context menu, system, targets, and then we claim a new target. So we're gonna go with the orchestrator category and click on PowerShell endpoint. You need an Interside Assist in order for this to work. I have two in my lab, so I'm gonna pick the first one. I'm gonna give it a name, like Windows Server Demo. And specify the host name or IP address as well as the username and password. Now the endpoint is in claim in progress. I'm gonna click on that. And I can see that shows as connected in my Interside account. Now we can go to Cloud Orchestrator and we're going to create a new workflow. So I'm going to give it a name and we want to create a workflow that sets the host name on a Windows server. So we can enable debug logs and we're gonna go ahead and create a new workflow input. We're gonna call it host name, which is basically the host name we would like the user to specify when they execute the workflow. We can set it as an acquired input and we can also add some validation rules, uh, like for instance, it needs to start with win dash. Now we switch to the designer tab and we are going to use the invoke PowerShell script task or executor. We're gonna change the name to something meaningful like set host name. Then we move to the input tab. Now we have two mandatory inputs. One is the external target and the other one is the script. So under the external target, we can find our uh, just claimed PowerShell endpoint with the server demo, we're gonna select that. Okay, we click on map and then we set the script. So we're gonna paste this script here, which basically sets the host name of a server to whatever is specified here in this variable. Now we want that to be a workflow input. So we're going to replace the string my new host name with something that makes sense in the interside orchestration world. So we're gonna go ahead and use uh, the templating syntax .global.workflow.input.hostName, which is the workflow input we created a moment ago. Go ahead and map it. Now the script returns a JSON output that contains the old host name as well as the new one. So we are interested to extract the previous host name. We go ahead and use a JSON response type. We use the JSON path syntax $.oldHostName and we're also going to assign the same name. It's gonna be type of string and we map it. Okay, now we save the workflow for validation and it worked. Now it's time to execute that. We're going to specify the host name as per our workflow input. We are not respecting the validation rules so far, so it says that the host name is not valid, and now it's okay. Win dash new host win is gonna be our host name. We execute that. We can see after a few seconds that the workflow succeeded. If we check out the outputs, we can see the full response old host name and new host name, and we are parsing correctly old host name, which is win-rjh. So this could be uh, optionally used as a uh, input from another workflow. So one last thing, uh, we mentioned that we need to claim up front our PowerShell targets. There is a way to claim them on the fly within a workflow, and that can be done specifically with a special task, which is called new target. So you can put that on the top of the workflow 
And if you click on that and check the inputs, you can see that you can specify obviously a name, a host name or IP address, and the claim target options will also allow you to claim your PowerShell endpoint the same way you used to do that in the um, main wizard within Intersight. And we can also delete the target at the end of our workflow using the task remove target.